Good morning, everyone. I'm happy to be here uh, in front of you again uh, during this uh, LDAP call. Um, as I said yesterday, um, I work for Vortex. Uh, Vortex is one of the sponsors of this uh, edition, so I'm very proud uh, in the name of uh, all Vortex uh, uh, company to, to be here and to be able to have this uh, event uh, with you. And I would like to thank again uh, Nadia and all the organization for, for this, uh, this event. So th thanks to them. And uh, also thanks to the committee to allow me to, to speak again about single salon. Uh, it's my passion, so I'm very happy to, to share it uh, with you. Um, today we will, uh, of course, talk about uh, Lemon and Appenji, which is the uh, open source software on which I, I work with some of my uh, Workers, um, and I would like to introduce uh, some topics with this, uh, like uh, multi-factor authentication, identity federation, and uh, some uh, hype subject like uh, web service and APIs. It is not blockchains, but it is quite hype, like uh, blockchain, uh, because uh, we are no more uh, working a lot on the infrastructure level and the adapt level. We are more and more working with uh, web applications and microservices and APIs, and we need to bring uh, some uh, security authentication authorization on these uh, applications, on these web services. So this is the topics. If you were there um, on Monday, and if you uh, participate uh, at the uh, workshop, you all already discovered a little the, the software. So I will present it. <coughs> Uh, very quickly, and uh, we we just uh, uh, see in the workshop how to enable the second factor authentication. So I will give some more details about uh, second factor authentication protocols like TOTP or um, U2F uh, protocols. So single sign-on. Um, this year I will not uh, sing it. Okay, I'm sorry, I did not take the, the guitar in the, in the plane. But, but I just would like to, to thank uh, Adapcon because uh, I, I already spoke about this subject uh, a long time ago uh, with different topics and I, I was put to be as the first Adapcon as a, a very new young man and I was very impressed to, to talk um, uh, uh, in front of you uh, to, to, uh, to talk about the Federal ID project, which was the first attempt to, to have an identity federation in uh, open source with the Liberty Alliance protocol, which is dead and replaced now by uh, SAM. And um, the Lemon Adapt project was uh, presented uh, in 2011, and then I, I, I spoke a little about uh, protocols like OpenID Connect, SAM, etc. So, this year, we had a workshop and some conference about this subject. And I hope I can talk about it in two years, too. So to, to sum up the single sign-on, it is quite uh, easy to understand. Uh, you only need this scheme to, to, to be able to understand <coughs> single sign-on. Um, how it works is that you have first access on an application, and, and we just saw that with the lightning talk about a red, uh, 21, 21 button. So you are an application uh, in SAML environment, it's a service provider. Uh, you are not uh, authenticated on it, so uh, there is a redirection on an authentication portal. This one is able to authenticate you. So you will have an identity here. This identity will be uh, Provided to the application through a token. A token is very uh, opaque, so we don't know what is a token because we have a lot of different single sign protocols. And with this token, there is a trust link between the application and the authentication portal. And thanks to this trust link, the application is able to recover the user identity from the token. So in some cases, the token. Uh, is signed and contains the data of the user, 
And in other uh, protocols, it does not contain anything. And the application needs to uh, exchange this token uh, against the user identity. So it depends on the single sign-on protocol. But all single sign-on protocols are working like this. Um, Lemon Adapt, so it's quite old uh, software because it, it started uh, uh, 15 years ago. Uh, it's a French project uh, at the origin. Uh, was, was made in, a, in some uh, big um, state organization, uh, a financial uh, state organization in France, and uh, was uh, forked by uh, Gendarmerie Nationale, which are the uh, the French policemen, okay, thanks to them. It is why uh, it is called uh, NG, uh, New Generation, but uh, the letters are also uh, Gendarmerie Nationale. So it's, uh, it's an uh, homage to the, to the National Gendarmerie. Um, at the beginning, uh, the software was just here to uh, protect a web application. We will see that with the uh, agent. It is uh, for the people uh, who succeed to have uh, uh, a good uh, cable uh, layout. That, uh, that was what we achieved uh, in the workshop. We, 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 we were able to protect uh, an Apache VirtualHost with uh, Lemon Adapt Agent. So this feature <coughs> is the one which was released at the beginning of the software. Then uh, a lot of people um, we are working on single sign-on, and we had uh, some protocols like CAS, SAML, and OpenID, the third version of OpenID. And uh, you see that over the years, we had uh, OpenID Connect. And uh, last year, we released a very, very important uh, version of Lemon App. That's why I, I wanted to present it uh, today, which is the 2.0 uh, version, which was not entirely rewritten, but uh, it, it's a big change in the source code. Uh, and uh, we introduce the second factor authentication. And uh, this second factor authentication is not just a, a new plugin of the software, it was really uh, introduced inside the authentication process of the software. So uh, you can uh, plug any uh, second factor authentication method directly into the authentication process. It is not just an additional plugin, it is really into the process. So we played with that uh, Monday. You see that the, the application uh, types can appear or disappear depending on how uh, are the authorization for the user. If I can access the application, I can have the tile. If I don't have an, any access, it will be hidden. So for a user, it's very convenient to, to have uh, this portal. So he knows exactly on which application <coughs> he can work with the <coughs> We also have a, a graphical uh, uh, management interface uh, where you can configure all the things for Lemon app and also browse the active sessions. And the command line, which you can use if you have a French keyboard, of course. <laughs> OK. Uh, I just uh, updated the virtual machine image uh, yesterday. So if you go back on the GitHub page, and you don't know the, the image, you will now have a uh, virtual box image with uh, the default uh, English keyboard. So you can try again if you want. If you, if you. Um, of course, it is free software. It is very important for us. And uh, it is a community software. Um, it is not owned by a, a company, a, a private company. We are several companies uh, working on it. Uh, so it, it's free of charge, of course. And uh, we are inside the OW2 uh, consortium. Uh, you, you talk about this, uh, Sean, uh, with the fourth project, which is also, also an <coughs> OW2 project. And uh, of course, uh, we, we discovered it uh, yesterday. We have the single signing component of the Fusion EM niches. So uh, a closer look on the technical uh, aspect of this uh, project. Uh, you, you see that we have uh, three main parts uh, inside the software. The, what, what we see, what is visible to users, is the portal. So that, that's the application menu. Uh, but the portal is also the responsible to, 
for managing all the single sign-on protocol like CAS, SAML, and OpenID Connect. It hosted the self-services and uh, it has its own uh, web services to uh, manage uh, sessions and to deliver uh, uh, some information for other applications. So with web services, you can easily uh, get the latest configuration or uh, get a session for user. Manager is for administrations, and the handler is uh, the protection agent for uh, Apache or Nginx. We will see how it works uh, just after that. Um, what is important is that uh, we share between these components the configuration and the sessions. Configurations, okay, it's, uh, it's because uh, all components need to read the configuration of the software. Uh, sessions is the way we have the trust between uh, the portal and the handler. And uh, as we are in LDAPCON, I have to say that you can use anything here, like a SQL database, a new SQL, but you can use an LDAP directory to store configurations and to store sessions. So if you are uh, an LDAP fan like me, you can uh, rip off all your databases and uh, replace <coughs> them by uh, an LDAP server and uh, scale your, 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 your installation only with, uh, with uh, LDAP and uh, LDAP uh, Multimaster uh, replication, for example. <coughs> so it's very easy to, to have a cluster uh, of uh, this single sign product because only the only thing you, have you need to cluster is uh, the backend for configuration and session. And then the other are just uh, program files that you install on, on the service. Uh, so, what is the, the how it works with uh, the handler, which is uh, Apache protection? You just need to uh, to uh, define this handler. So, I have, a, I have a pointer here. This piece of software is a is a, a piece of uh, Lemon LDAP software. So, you install it on the web server where the web application is, or you can install it <coughs> on a reverse proxy and have a reverse proxy between this and your web applications. This one is uh, responsible uh, to uh, check the authentication and authorization. When you access to the application, you indeed access to this virtual host and the request is captured by uh, this handler. Uh, if you're not authenticated, the handler will uh, redirect you to this portal. You authenticate and the portal will create your session here. When you go back, you have a, a cookie here in which you have the session ID. The handler is able to read this session ID and will uh, recover your identity and all your attributes and is able first to uh, check if you're authorized on the service. And then if you're authorized, the, the request is sent to the web application with some HTTP headers and you can configure anything you want in uh, HTTP headers. So this web application does not have to know anything about this portal. It just needs to read some HTTP headers. And uh, as we saw uh, uh, one day, a lot of applications are directly compatible with this uh, single sign-on mode. We, we, we've done it with a Fusion directory. We've done it with DocuWiki on a lot of, all, uh, of applications and knows how to read identity from HTTP headers. If you already uh, configure um, an Apache uh, authentication module, like a mode uh, auto LDAP or mode on basic, uh, this is exactly the same thing. This is an agent which will uh, pass some environment uh, context to the application. So any application which is able to be protected with an Apache authentication module can be protected with the Lemon LDAP agent. Um, some word on, on multi-factor authentication. Most of you know, know that. Um, and we had a, a, a demo by uh, Kieran uh, yesterday. Um, it, it is just uh, an idea to uh, be able to enforce security. Uh, of course, like uh, 
and you said this morning a password may be not the best solution, but others are worse. So we still have some password. It's often the first authentication factor, the, the password. And to improve the security, we can add a second authentication factor. So we can mix something we know. Uh, we know this is the password and something we, we own or something we are. This is biometric. If you, if you can have a biometric system, and this can be your mobile phone or any uh, uh, token, uh, physical token uh, like a USB key or a key. So with this, uh, we can combine uh, two factors. Uh, one of these uh, uh, second factor can be a one-time password. Uh, and you have two standards for this, HTTP and uh, TOTP. Uh, in uh, Lemon and App, we can uh, use this one. Uh, it relies on a shared secret. Uh, to know more about this, if you want to be, a, uh, if you want to talk about this with your family uh, at Christmas, you can uh, you can explain that uh, this is this algorithm that is used uh, to uh, compute the the TOTP code. Uh, what what is important is that, is that we have a time counter. So when you <coughs> exchange your your shared secret, it is a, a private key which is shared between the server and, and your phone. Uh, you also decide what will be the start time and the time interval. You can configure it to be uh, each uh, 60 uh, seconds or, or another duration. And with this, uh, you, are, you are able to compute this and it will uh, uh, give you uh, a temporary code. And this code will be able to be uh, uh, verified by the by the server. Hope you you understand this. Um, on user side, it is just an application. So uh, as I said one day, there are a lot of free applications to do that. There are also a closed source application like the Google Authenticator, which work to to do that. So it will generate uh, code. You you see that. You can also define how many digits you want in your code. This is uh, a configuration on the server. And uh, so you register by uh, sharing a key. Uh, the server associates this shell key to your user account. That's why you need to be first logged uh, to have a, a user account. And then uh, at next authentication, uh, TOTP value is computed by client and servers. And the, the server is able to compare them. This is uh, very easy to, to set up. And um, some <coughs> years ago, uh, we had a, a new, uh, <coughs> a, a new uh, second factor uh, protocol managed by uh, Fido Alliance. I don't know if you know this uh, organization, and uh, which is called a universal second factor. Um, the goal of this is to be able to have um, physical uh, um, material directly compatible with this, uh, with this uh, protocol. Like we saw, uh, TOTP is only software. Uh, with this, we can have some uh, directly uh, YubiKey uh, compatible with these uh, protocols. Um, how it works? Uh, you need to register your token. So uh, your token will generate uh, some case uh, and handle and uh, the public key and the handle is sent to the server. The server can associate this to the user. And at next authentication, we have a challenge. And the crypto challenge is a result by uh, the token as is sent back to the server. So this is a more secure way to, to have a, a second factor authentication. Um, I was lazy to reproduce the scheme, so I, I, I steal the schemes on the uh, internet. They are not very uh, beautiful, but it is how it works. So you have the, um, the browser here, where you have the Fido client. And uh, this is how the challenge is uh, working. So this is the re registration part. And then we have the uh, authentication part. So you, you see the handle, and you see the, the challenge here. Um, in Lehman Adapt, we support all these uh, second factors. So, of course, UTP, U2F, 
this is a combination of uh, TOTP and OTF. Uh, this is a very low second factor because we can just send the mail with a code. So if your password is compromised, it is not very efficient because we can access to your mail too. Um, but we can also uh, call some REST API or uh, any external script. So you can have uh, any uh, second factor uh, system and you can just run a script to say, okay, send this code or generate this code. And of course the YubiKey, which is uh, uh, this uh, token, it has a, uh, at first time a specific uh, proprietary uh, um, system, which is called the YubiKey system, but YubiKey can also do uh, U2F or QTP, so you can use any YubiKey with that. Um, identity federation, okay, it's a big word. Um, this part is just to, to let you know that Lemon LDAP is able to deal with a, a lot of protocols and to be a gateway between these protocols. So it can be, of course, a server because it is at first place a single sign-on server, but it can be also a client. So it can connect to any other uh, single sign-on server uh, with a, a free protocol, CAS, SAML, and OpenID Connect. We will just see quickly how it, how it works. Um, the share attributes and um, what is important is that we can uh, manage authentication context. So um, you can say that you need a, a higher uh, authentication context for some user of some applications. And we have a, a, a new feature in 2.0 which are the access control uh, pair services. Before this version, you could not uh, set access control on uh, external uh, services. Uh, you, 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 you were forced to use a handler to have uh, authorization on application. Uh, from uh, 2.0 version, you can uh, set some access control uh, for any uh, client application that are connected through CAS, SAML, or OpenID Connect. It means that you will first connect the application, for example, uh, a SAML service provider, and uh, when the uh, SAML request will be uh, taken by a uh, uh, MLDAP portal, the MLDAP portal will check if the user can access to this application. If he is not authorized, the SAML response will not be sent to this application. So you can have a centralized authorization server uh, with a lot of different protocols on different applications. And of course, one important point is a single logout because uh, everyone knows how to log in, but uh, a few people know that when you are logged in, uh, you need to log out sometime, and uh, when you log out, you need to advertise all your partners that the user is logged out. And it's very complex if you have uh, an application that is connected with CAS and another application which is connected by SAML, you need to send, send a logout message in both protocols to be able to disconnect the user from uh, all applications. So it quite works with OS protocol, but you will uh, uh, always find a combination of application on which you, you will not able to, to send back the, the logout uh, request. But we, we've done a lot of tests and we, we are able to, to take a, a logout from a CAS application and, re, uh, and resend it uh, through OpenID Connect, for, for example. A quick view on, on, on CAS, um, as you, you see that the scheme is, is the same as the first. Uh, CAS is, work, is working with uh, service tickets, so it's a very uh, low security protocol because you only exchange a, a ticket in the URL and when the client uh, receives the ticket, he needs to call a validation endpoint on the server to get back the identity of the user. It works well, but it's very easy. Um, for SAML, you see that uh, we have some uh, case, so we have a public key and private case. And when the authentication repos, uh, response is sent to the service provider, uh, it, he, he is able to uh, check the <coughs> integrity and to uh, <coughs> get the, uh, the assertion in which you find the user identity. So in SAML, you don't need to 
uh, call back the identity provider to get the user identity. The user identity is directly inside the token, which is a SAML response, which is at least signed and it can be also uh, encrypted. And OpenID Connect, as you, as you notice, it is the same scheme, but here uh, the, the, the client is called the relying party and the server is the OpenID provider. Here uh, you have uh, directly a, a GWT, uh, which, is a, which is a JSON web token. Uh, it is also signed. Um, so the, the, the client can uh, check the uh, token signature and uh, read all the user data in this. There is a specific endpoint here, which is called user uh, info, uh, that you can uh, access with a O2 token because OpenID Connect is uh, based on O2. So when you get this token here, you get a second token, which is a uh, standard O2 token. And this O2 token uh, can uh, allow the rolling party to request a uh, web service on the OpenID provider. So you have both link, uh, you have the first uh, link which is directly from uh, identity information inside this token and you have another link which forces the client to request the provider to get uh, the user info. This protocol is mostly adopted now. Uh, if you want to log in with Google from your application, you will do some open IP connect protocol. Uh, in France, we have a, a big uh, a federation for citizens, which is called France Connect. And with Frank, for France Connect is based on OpenID protocol. And a lot of uh, uh, public services are now offering OpenID protocols. But uh, SAML is still alive. Uh, we had this discussion. This discussion. Uh, you, you don't need to throw uh, all your, your SAML application because SAML is still a very strong protocol. It may be a little complex, that's why uh, we, uh, we discovered the OpenID Connect protocol. Uh, SAML is not very uh, fit for mobile applications, for, for example. So if you need to authenticate your mobile application, you will certainly uh, opt for uh, OpenID Connect. But both protocols are, are still very used, and uh, I think you need to implement uh, in, your, in, your, in the real life the, the, the two protocols. So Lemon and Lab can use uh, both of them as a client or as a server. So you can have a gateway. For example, you have uh, already a SAML uh, uh, identity provider in your organization. You will configure Lemon and Lab as a SAML client, and you will then uh, be able to uh, plug an OpenID Connect client or a CAS client that will trust Lemon and Lab, and Lemon and Lab will then redirect your user with a SAML protocol on your identity provider and get back, etc., etc. Et so the last uh, part of this talk is about uh, API and web service protection. This is uh, the hype moment of the talk, so please listen to it. Uh, uh, does any of you uh, need to access to uh, web services or API or to manage API? Do you need this in your, okay. Um, we, I, I, I'm, no, I, I'm forced to talk to developers. Uh, I'm, I'm not a, a developer guy, okay. Uh, I'm an infrastructure guy, and uh, we have a lot of developers that are using uh, very modern systems, uh, like uh, a front-end uh, front JavaScript framework, for example, or uh, directly native mobile applications, or any, any, uh, any other technology, which is not uh, a simple uh, PHP page on the server. So we now have a new world uh, in the web application uh, development, which is not, I, I create a, a, a world application that is hosted on my server, but I will create some part of applications, one part for the client, and other uh, business logic uh, will be uh, set up in microservices, which are uh, APIs or web services. Uh, it depends on how you, you want to call it. Uh, and this API will be, uh, uh, called by the client code, uh, which is managed either inside a mobile, uh, mobile application, either on a, a JavaScript front end in your browser, either, uh, I don't know what, what you want. Um, what is the issue with this? Uh, is how you protect this web service. 
Okay, of course, uh, you can uh, let your web service open to, to the world, which is a very bad idea. Uh, you, you just hope that anyone, uh, uh, no one will, will know about your web service and no one will uh, call it. Okay, it, it is the first, first point. You can do that. Uh, but uh, then you, you have to think, okay, how do I give access to this uh, API or web service only to uh, uh, trusted application or trusted users? The first way to do it is a global authentication. You say, okay, uh, I will uh, set up uh, some HTTP basic authentication or uh, SSL client authentication. It means that uh, only the web applications or the, the, the client code that owns the credential or the application that owns the client certificate will be able to uh, request your web service. It works but it won't let you uh, manage which user can access or not your web service. Uh, when you do that, uh, the web service on the API side, you only know that this application has called you, but you don't know which is the connected user on the front-end application. You can know that only if you agreed with the front-end application that when uh, this front-end application calls you, it will uh, pass you the user ID inside uh, an HTTP header or inside uh, a GET uh, parameter. But this is on API side and it is not really on uh, the authorization part. With the first technique, you are forced to give access to anyone connected to the front-end application because you give access to the front-end application. Now, uh, we may have to uh, limit the API to some users. And you may want to only uh, give access to this API to some connected users. But as you may know, uh, the user was authenticated on the front-end application. And the front-end application is hosted elsewhere. Uh, you don't have any information about the authentication context on the API side. So how, how to do it? Um, with Lemon and App, we uh, first uh, implemented in 2.0 version a new handler, so a new agent, which is called the service token handler. With this, uh, you are able to uh, protect first the front-end application and then to instantiate a, a single agent between the web application, so the front-end, and the web service. It is very convenient, but it only relies on a Lemon and App component. Component, so you, you, you must have a Lemon and App installed uh, both uh, between your browser and your front end application and between your front end application and your back end. Um, this is some easy uh, cryptography uh, token which is generated by the front end agent, is sent to the front end application, and the application can then use this token to request the API and uh, the agent between the front-end and the API will uh, catch this token and check that this token is uh, OK and authorize people. It is maybe easy with this schema. So you see that uh, we have the first uh, handler here. This one will uh, generate a new token here. So this first part is the same as uh, the one we saw uh, at the beginning of the presentation. And it is uh, what we've done here with, uh, for example, DocuWiki. But we have uh, an extra token here. And this web application can then, call, can then call the web service here, but only with sending the token. Here, this agent will be able to resolve this token and to access to this, se to this session database and send back HTTP header to the web services. The important uh, thing here that is that the web services uh, does not know anything about uh, this agent. It just has to read HTTP headers to know uh, which is the connected user. It is like this web application. It just has to read uh, HTTP headers uh, to know uh, which is the user. Uh, the second uh, advantage of this is that here you can do some authorization. So you can say, uh, this user uh, is from uh, this group, and this group can access this web service. Of course, in the Manel app, you can uh, have some uh, regular expression on uh, URLs, so you can protect uh, several uh, endpoints 
in a one virtual host and to give access, different access to different endpoints. So this is a, a first solution. The other solution is to say, OK, we have the host 2 which is a, a well-known uh, uh, framework. Uh, we can't call this a, a protocol. Uh, if you discuss with uh, host 2 experts, uh, the host 2 uh, proto uh, the host 2 protocol does not exist. It is not a protocol. It is a framework on which you can build some protocol. And OpenID Connect is a protocol built uh, upon host 2 But it gives you a, a, a syntax to be able to exchange some tokens and to do authorization on services. Um, so in a app, we are uh, uh, an OpenID co Connect uh, provider. So uh, we deliver an O2 access token. As I said, uh, this O2 access token inside the OpenID protocol is only used to request the user for endpoint, which is a specific endpoint to get uh, some uh, attributes about the user. So. If you uh, want to uh, give access to an API, you can also, with a front-end application, send the O2 access token to this web service and let the web service check the validity of this O2 token. It can call the user for endpoint, which is an existing uh, and standard endpoint in OpenID Connect. We also have another endpoint, which is called the introspection endpoint which is a, a standard uh, uh, RFC in O2, uh, which will return an information about the token, including the token owner. So with this, you have the user attributes. With this, you have only one attribute, which is the main uh, identifier of the user. But in both cases, you are requesting a, a, an API to check the token. And we uh, deliver also a new agent, which is an O2 agent which will work uh, like the service token agent, but instead of a specific token which is built by Lemon and App, we can use any uh, OS2 access token to protect the web service. If you want to, to see how it works, here you have a web application. As you see, we don't have any uh, Lemon and App agent here because this web application uses the standard uh, OpenID, proto OpenID Connect protocol to get uh, the ID token an access token. <laughs> so here you can use any uh, web application that is compatible with OpenID Connect. But when you get back this access token, if you want to call this web service, you just have to send the access token, and this handler will be able to resolve this access token, check that this access token is valid for this users, and send back HTTP headers. So the, the good point for this web service is that this web service does not have to resolve the access token. The trust is resolved here. And it just has to read HTTP headers. To finish some uh, examples, uh, this is how you pass an uh, O2 token uh, inside a O2 request. So you just send uh, an authorization HTTP header, uh, and you send the value of the access token. So here. I request the O2 uh, user for endpoint, and you see that if my O2 access token is valid, I will get back this uh, JSON response from the user for endpoint. So this is the first method. The other is to use the uh, introspect endpoint. For this, I need the, the token as a, a post uh, data parameter. <coughs> And I also need to authenticate myself because this introspection endpoint is protected by a basic authentication. This basic authentication is the same as the uh, basic authentication you, knew you use to request an ID token and an access token. It, is, it uses the client ID and client secret from your uh, application. And with this, you see that you, you've got another uh, answer which contains the subject, which is the user main identifier, and other uh, information about the token. So the token, you know, that is what uh, uh, sent for the client, which is an app, and uh, you have the scopes of the token. And the last is the whole two handler. So here I have protected this script by my agent, 
which is uh, the host one there. So I just sent the uh, host to token here. And this code is very simple. It just reads some uh, HTTP headers to uh, output this. So here, to get this value, I just uh, print the HTTP headers that I received in the script. So here, you are protected by the host to token without uh, being uh, forced to uh, implement any O2 uh, code inside your web service. So that's all for me. Uh, thank you. I, I don't know if you have any question about this uh, presentation. Yeah? Uh, so, so it seems like um, I'm just learning these protocols. So it seems like uh, validating Seems like validating JSON tokens um, has the advantage of you can do it offline. Whereas um, uh, you're depending on the expiration of the token. Yeah. Instead of being able to revoke the token. I so the, the ID token, which is a JSON web token, uh, this token is uh, indeed a token w which contains data and which is signed. So you can uh, validate this token on client side just by uh, checking the token signature. And you write uh, a token as a, a, life, a, li a lifetime. But in OS2 protocol, they, uh, they create uh, a specific token, which is called the refresh token. So you can have a, a refresh token. And this refresh token is able uh, to be uh, kept offline by the, by the application. And this application can use this refresh token to ask a new access token. So if you need an access token to access to your API, and this access token is uh, revoked, uh, you can have a refresh token. It, this is what is going. Uh, well, it is what is happening when you install, for example, your Twitter application on your mobile phone. When you connect to Twitter, the first time you enter your login and password, you get a refresh token. And each time the application needs to communicate with the Twitter API, uh, the access token is not valid anymore. But you have a refresh token, which is, which is stored on your phone. And this refresh token can be used to get a new access token to access to Twitter. That's why on Twitter website, you can see, OK, this application, this mobile application, is linked <coughs> to my uh, Twitter account. And if you rework this link, Indeed, you revoke the refresh token. So next time the refresh token is, is sent to Twitter, you cannot have an access token anymore. So the, the mobile app, you need to log in again to get a new refresh token, which is valid and associated to your account. So you, you can manage this. But the refresh token in host 2 is only uh, valid to get a new access token, with it, which is an opaque identifier. And the ID token is specific to uh, OpenID Connect. And you cannot request a new ID token with a refresh token. The, these are really two different tokens, and they are not used for the same thing. Yeah, thank you. And just one more question. Um, so I've been working with Keycloak. Uh, Keycloak, yes. Can you offer any comparison? OK, uh, we, we, are, we are indeed uh, offer confronted to, to Keycloak, which is uh, the Red Hat software to do a single sign-in. Uh, Kicklock is a more uh, younger product than uh, Remanet app. I think it was created four years ago. Uh, it works very well. Uh, in my company, we are also with that partners on we install Kicklock so on some customers. Kicklock uh, has implemented SAML and OpenID Connect. Uh, Kicklock does not know about CAS protocol, for example. But if you only need a, a SAML or OpenID Connect, you can use Kicklock. Um, you won't be able to have the same level of authorizations with Kicklock for the moment, uh, but Kicklock is more uh, developer oriented. It means that at the beginning, Kicklock was a, a pure O2 server and uh, it implements all the O2 uh, protocols, which is wider that, than the uh, OpenID Connect protocol. And so you can do uh, more things with O2 inside Kicklock. There are two products. The only thing you know, uh, you must know, is that Kicklock is a community edition. And if you want some support from Red Hat, you need to buy the Red Hat SSO product, which is a Kicklock uh, branded by Red Hat. And with this, you need to pay the, the GBOS uh, license to be able to run Kicklock. 
Kitok is written in Java. Uh, Lemonadap is written in Perl, and it, uh, you can install it with a, a package. There are no package for Kitok. I think you, you just have a, a tarball to, to deploy in your Java server. But uh, it's clear that uh, Kitok technology is, is very good too, and you can use it if you need. Thank you. Yes? Uh, you mentioned uh, global logout, which is a very yes. useful feature. Yes. Um, what if I'm logged in from four different devices? Yeah. Uh, <coughs> even, can I target the logout to the one that I've just lost? You want to log out only on one device? That's Possibly. Okay. Um, in the real world, uh, the single logout, what you call the global logout, is called the single logout, it's because you, you, you log out one time and you should be logged out from all applications. Uh, you know, in the real world, it does not work very well uh, because uh, each different protocol has its own way to uh, send the logout information. So if you're connected with SAML, uh, you need to send either a redirection request on the SAML uh, uh, web page or use a SOAP request between your identity provider and your, your SAML uh, application. And with OpenID Connect, you also have a front end uh, logout channel and a uh, back end logout <coughs> channel. Yeah, it wasn't so much the multiple services I was interested in. Yes. But if, my, if I've logged in on a laptop and I've logged in on a phone and I've logged in on a tablet yeah. with the same account. Yeah. What is the effect of going and logging out on one of those? Does it log the others out? If, if your application are respecting the single logout uh, protocol part, uh, yes. The, for example, you log out from your laptop on your identity provider, and your identity provider uh, can... Uh, uh, it's, it's, okay, it's difficult because the identity provider must know that uh, the identity you used for your laptop is the same identity uh, for your mobile phone because it is maybe the same login, but you, you have uh, several uh, uh, authentication contexts. It means if you logged in from your mobile, mobile application, you did not know, uh, you didn't do single sign-on because you were forced to log in on your mobile application with a login and password. And on your laptop, you were also forced to log in with a login and password because there are the, the, the two devices uh, do not share any secrets. So you can't say, okay, I'm logged in, in with my phone, and then I want to be able to access to the same application with my laptop, and I want that my laptop trust my mobile device to, to go to login. So th these are uh, two uh, different uh, authentication contexts, and I don't think that you can be logged out from one uh, application here from the others. But if you, if you go on Google, you, you can see that uh, on Google, uh, you have a list of uh, connected uh, devices. That's so what I was thinking. They yes. to, you can say, log that. It is outside the single sign-on scope, because the single sign-on is only when you, you sign in on application on the same device. The, 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 the goal of the single sign-on is to say, OK, I, I, I open three applications, but I just want to log in once for all these three applications. But if I log in for another device, I can't share my, 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 my secret between the two devices. So I need to be uh, to authenticate again on the other device. Yes, uh, that, that's understood. Yes. Uh, what I was hoping is that the central ID provider would be aware of each of the devices that you have authenticated mm. and yeah, would I allow you to. Uh, yeah, there is an answer on <coughs> the, the back end can answer. <coughs> So yes, your IDP needs to have a back channel yeah. uh, logout endpoint as well as the front channel. So if the IDP can remove any sessions for that user, and in that effectively kills cookies or tokens. So that when you on another device and you attempt to access the application, the service says, well, you haven't got a session anymore, but you got to log in. So again, that's something that is provided by some IDPs, for example, Confederate that the back channel stuff is not standardized. But you can kill a session, but you, you, are, you are agree that uh, there are two sessions. There are one session for the laptop and one session for the mobile application, which are different authentication sessions. So you, you need it indeed to, to uh, union this session and to 
the gout or, or the clinic itself. Not necessarily. You just, you just kill the tokens on this particular response to this request, and you're then out of this sort of device. And you still maintain one session. You don't necessarily need to have one session per device. No? OK. The, the, the remark of Kiran is that we don't need to have, we, we can have only one session for many devices. I, I did not uh, experiment uh, it, so I, ca I can talk about it. Thank you. Thank you.